Hey, every hey there everybody. I'm going to go through a video relatively quickly because I hope that a lot of people get to view this video and that they get a new appreciation about what is going to happen um, to all currency, to uh, the entire blockchain programming developments, and how it will affect nations and investors and so forth. And then um, while it will be somewhat obvious by the end of this video, I will also show you how to frankly make millions of dollars if you so choose to do so. So um, this, this will be interesting to all the folks who worry about political drama, people who are into investing in general, and of course the uh, blockchain space, even though uh, some of us in the blockchain space are kind of ar already aware of some of the things I'm about to talk about, but it's going to be incredibly exciting. So I hope you can uh, pay attention and I'll try to go as quickly as possible so that this does not become too long. Okay, so there is a great discussion going on in the Ethereum community, which I hope that a lot of people are uh, becoming introduced to, becoming aware of, and uh, Vitalik, uh, Vitalik uh, Buterin, who is the CEO, some people are unaware of this, who is the CEO of, uh, effectively, of Ethereum, has been supporting uh, increased debate and uh, discussion along uh, these lines, and he's already made his own recommendation, which I'll share with you, and I, I just want to show, so I'm just using that a little bit to say that the topics I'm talking about have already been addressed partially by the CEO of Ethereum, and I am, uh, who I refer to as the CEO of Ethereum. And uh, before Vitalik, they were addressed by Vlad, who I want to give credit to, and uh, some of the other members in the Ethereum community, and some of the social YouTubers, uh, Crypto News, I get some information from Ivan on Tech, da 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 da. Okay, but before I go into that, before this becomes long, let's go ahead and cut to the chase, shall we? Okay, this here is a pie chart of the Ethereum expenses for what some people might refer to as blockchain security. I'm going to move this super close so you can kind of really zoom in on it if you uh, desire to do so at, at some other time. But anyways, so this is a pie chart of uh, the uh, Ethereum expenses, uh, it's essentially a fixed expense, if you could say. It's a, a fixed purpose expense. It only has one purpose, and that is to purchase some amount of computers. So uh, this here, this orange number, which I uh, want to point out here, this represents, um, uh, I think it's 12 million. I need to have this stuff pulled up so that I can uh, quote it quickly. Let me get this pulled up here. Okay. Uh, this orange number here represents about $12 million that Ethereum spent in one month to uh, power their computers on their blockchain network. And all these other numbers around here are is how much is Ethereum spent on the months prior to that. And this little sliver right here, which is relatively hard to see, uh, this is um, what it was spending in the months previous. So you can kind of see how it, how it goes up but it's remained relatively flat up until this uh, orange date of February 2017, when um, uh, during the month of February 2017, Ethereum spent $13 million securing their blockchain, okay? And in a order, and what this means, well, anyways, moving on. So uh, this here, is a graph showing all the expenses that Ethereum spent on their blockchain. Let's see if it can zoom in for me. There you go. Good. So you got a good overview look over it. So this is uh, the uh, expenses here. And this this here is July, the small one here. The one before it, that extraordinary large number, is June 2017. Thus, you can see what some people refer. Well, it's a crash in Ethereum price. Uh, no doubt about that, but you can see how the extraordinary expenses in June 2017 could indicate that a crash was uh, headed our way. So then um, in uh, the month before June, the month before, and you see this little uh, orange bit right here because the colors I think are actually the same here. So this little orange bit down here represents $13 million, which I think you can barely see at this point in time. Uh, everything before the orange bit is every month prior to the orange. This uh, maroon bit is $40 million. 
and this uh, blue one on the edge is a hundred million. So just to be clear here, this this brown bit is forty million. This blue bit is one hundred million, and this very tall line is two hundred and seventy million dollars. And this line just a little bit below it is one hundred and seventy seven million dollars. So these were amounts that were spent in just two months uh, doing what Ethereum was spending uh, roughly $12 million on or less monthly uh, every month before that. This uh, uh, 12 to $13 million number I've referenced is the most uh, spent before that. And this uh, brown number here, this maroon number, which I want to point out right now, that is the most that any coin except for Bitcoin, had spent in any month prior to Ethereum. Ethereum's gone a little bit nuts, but here you go. So uh, this little maroon number, people like talk about blockchain security. So their claim is essentially that every single coin except for Bitcoin and Ethereum are insecure. But in either case, um, just to be absolutely 300% clear, this maroon number uh, that you see there is more than any coin had spent in any single month on the blockchain space before Ethereum, um, except for Bitcoin today. Now this tall graph here is more than any coin had spent in any single month period, including Bitcoin um, at its highest value. So, so this here uh, is the most that you will hopefully ever see spent in any month by any coin on the blockchain space. Um, of course, it's a, you know, what some people might refer to as, as, as a mistake, but you learn from mistakes and, uh, you, you, you can't, uh, you can't make new innovations without making mistakes, I, I would speculate. So either case, moving on. Now, to help that get visualized a little bit further, um, I want to show this little pie graph here. So here is all the spending of Ethereum had ever done. Um, with this little bit, uh, I'm saying uh, 2015, uh, January 1st, 2015 is that little bitty sliver. And this here is two months, uh, May, June, and then you got July up here, and you got a few months before over here. So in May and June, just two single months, Ethereum had spent more money securing its blockchain than it had spent in its entire history up into that point, and uh, including July, even this quite big sliver. So Ethereum in two months spent more money uh, than it did in its entire history. And if you look at just June is a little bit of a funny one. Uh, it spent, <laughs> it's a bit funny, but it spent more money in June than like a year. Th this year, this year represents uh, about a year right there. So it spent more money in June than it did in all of 2016. It spent more money in May than all of 2016. And it probably uh, will spend more in July than it did for all of 2016. So I just want you, uh, and this is the most of any coin ever in a single month. I just want you to fully appreciate, appreciate that for a second if you can. Okay. Now let's uh, talk about, uh, and, and just to kind of refresh, this is kind of what it looked like before, uh, before the big changes happened. So I'm going to sort of express you uh, why this occurred and how it happened, how to fix it, and it's an incredibly easy fix. And I'm sorry I've taken so much of your time already, but I am going to have to be, I, I will try to be quick now. So regarding the cost of the blockchain space, some people speculate that you need to spend between $1 million and $100 million. Every coin except Ethereum and Bitcoin, uh, they spend, uh, I think the most expensive coin spends uh, 10 million a month, uh, maybe 50, maybe 50 million. I think that uh, that might even be generous to Litecoin. But um, I think the most that uh, any of these other non-Ethereum, non-Bitcoin spend is, uh, it's typically less than uh, 10 million a month. I, I will assure you that. But uh, Litecoin is uh, the next highest. I think Dash spends like uh, $250,000 a month or maybe half a million a month. And Dash is valued at like $1 billion. So it's a, it's a relatively sizable coin. 
and uh, for people to say it's insecure because it's not spending 250 million and it spends uh, half a million instead, a lot of people might just say it's being economically sound rather than insecure. But let's see. So uh, the way that uh, so the way that blockchain space is supported, there's transaction fees which are negotiated in today's dollars. Uh, based on two different users, the users who own computers and the users who are making transactions. And these come out to roughly 25, maybe 50 cents, depending. And then there is a different fee, which I typically refer to as empty block space rewards, uh, bonuses, empty block space bonuses. Uh, but this fee is set as a percent of market cap and is paid out regardless of what goes on in the blockchain. Okay. So um, as it's established as a percent of market cap, as the coin goes up, so does the expense goes up, go, the expense likewise goes up, and sometimes it can go up to an unsustainable level. So for example, uh, just to go back to Ethereum here, if Ethereum was to maintain a price of $400, then this is what the expense would be every single month, or to put it another way, it would be, um, twice that of Bitcoin at merely a $400 uh, value, a uh, spot price for the value of one Ether. Okay, it's based on the spot price of Ether, just to be clear on that again. So uh, so when you talk about the percent of market cap, Ethereum set its, uh, its, bonus, its bonuses to be 11% of the market cap. And as the market cap goes up, you have these wild uh, conditions that occur here. And then um, Bitcoin, they wrote, so, okay, so Ethereum has it set to be 11% of the market cap. So this creates this outlandish situation. Uh, Vitalik has made his proposal to reduce the blocks from five blocks to three blocks, which will put it at 6.6% uh, of the market cap. And then uh, I have my proposal where I suggest reducing from five blocks to one block, which will put it at two and a quarter, but 2% of the 2% uh, in inflation or price deflation, the way, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, but 2% uh, inflation of the currency. So what, we're, so what we're going to see here is that um, by, by keeping the value at five blocks to three blocks and so, so on, you effectively limit the potential for growth of the coin. For example, uh, I think Bitcoin is a relatively funny one, but uh, let's just take the 4% uh, growth that uh, that Bitcoin is set to. Hmm. Okay, let me let me get some numbers I can play with here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so if I was to say that uh, Bitcoin should grow at roughly uh, 4% and should have um, should have roughly how much do you want to say for the uh, do, 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 do. okay I'm going to talk in terms of uh, market cap because people are kind of familiar with that a little bit more with Bitcoin than the actual price of the coin but uh, if you say 4% uh, is the good rate for Bitcoin then it cannot sustain a market cap above approximately $40 billion. This is essentially what the coin is valued at now. And uh, the coin literally cannot go become more valuable, unfortunately. So um, until it gets adjusted again in five years from now. So, uh, so uh, at 40 billion, um, Bitcoin will pay 150 million a month for their coin and if the uh, market cap was to go up to something like um, let's just say 80 billion for talking purposes then Bitcoin would uh, go from paying 1.6 billion for their computer usage each year to paying three and a half billion for their computer usage each year and then if it was uh, to go up some more to say um, 120 billion, then Bitcoin starts begins paying 500 million dollars a month. If if it uh, was to try to sustain a price at 120 billion, which uh, a market cap at 120 billion, which comes out to six billion annually.
So the, the problem that I want to uh, stress to you is that regardless of the actual physical cost of computers for Bitcoin to grow, it must pay for the computers for, uh, for uh, Bitcoin to see 200% inflation in the price or, or change in the price. Uh, to see a 200% increase, Bitcoin must pay for their computers $6 billion annually. The actual uh, necessary cost to sustain a blockchain is maybe $600 million. So Bitcoin will overpay for what other people, Bitcoin will overpay 1,000% uh, or something like this uh, compared to a new currency that was not set in stone in 2009. Now, Ethereum, so Bitcoin, who uh, made their coin in 2009 and was making predictions, they said that 4% in 2017 would be a good idea. Now, Ethereum is deciding what is the appropriate price in 2017. So Bitcoin made their decision in nine, trying to look eight years in the future and guessed at 4%. Uh, Bitcoin is making a decision in 2017 based on the information available in 2017. And a lot of people say, well, it should just match Bitcoin. But just keep in mind that the Bitcoin creator made a wild guess eight months, uh, eight years prior to uh, today's date. Um, so really to say that we should rely on somebody's guess eight years ago of what crypto would be in the worth in the future just might not be smart versus uh relying on the actual numbers that we have access to today right this is what most people would probably call smarter so okay so uh that's really all there is to it um i know it's not really been life-changing i know it's not really been too uh, impressive in terms of like oh my gosh you, you know yeah you're so smart but it is spotting a, uh, what would probably come out to a one, in my opinion, a $1 trillion mistake. Now, granted, Vlad and Vitalik were in discussions regarding this, but I don't think they appreciated the full implications that making the change could have. So what I, so um, then for miners, and just uh, address miners out there, because a lot of people think, well, if they reduce the um, inflation uh, of Ethereum from 11% to uh, 2%, won't that hurt miners or won't that hurt the total payout that Ethereum makes into the blockchain system? And this is actually not correct, um, even though I know it sounds uh, uh, counterintuitive. So um, right, right now at the 11% inflation rate, one in nine Ethereum users or people who've made previous purchases of Ethereum for $5,000, I'll say, uh, they need to convince a new user every single year to purchase another five thousand dollars of inflation uh, of Ethereum in order to keep this the price stable at where it is. So, if one in nine users must recruit one new user every year to maintain the price of Ethereum, or uh, in its current condition, or if you have forty-five thousand dollars of Ethereum, you must also uh, uh, you must also recruit a new purchaser of Ethereum every single year. So now when you uh, reduce that to 2%, as I suggest, two and a quarter, then it, uh, now one in 45 people need to recruit, recruit one new purchaser of Ethereum every year in order to maintain its uh, price point, which uh, one in 45 is quite manageable. One in nine is a little bit optimistic. Uh, most people would agree on that. Or to, uh, to put it another way, only people who have a quarter million dollars held in Ethereum need to recruit one new person every single year uh, to make a $5,000 uh, investment into Ethereum in order to maintain the price. So this is how um, inflation affects the market price of blockchain and how the computer price, how the amount of money spent on computers, or you could call it wasted on computers, can limit the, um, can limit the natural growth of the blockchain. So uh, in my proposal, Ethereum needs to simply maintain its current level of new user adoption, which is approximately uh, 20,000 new, new investors a month investing $5,000 or so. 
um, or 300,000 new investors annually investing $5,000. This is approximately the current growth of Ethereum, and this is what I suggest Ethereum should attempt to maintain for a long period of time. But if you're to do something like, um, like I kind of mentioned uh, with the Bitcoin or whatever, um, in order for Bitcoin to uh, tr to have a $120 billion uh, market cap, it has to go from a growth rate of roughly 300,000 users a year to 1 million users a year just to break even. So if you do not, so as you uh, ignore or whatever, as you ignore the amount of money you spend on computers, you're effectively, if you refer to yourself as management, if you say that your goal is to stabilize the price of, a, of what you manage or to increase it, whichever you want to say. Um, but, if, but as you ignore how much you're spending on computers, you're effectively making the recruitment level that you have to make in order to sa in, uh, sustain the price, uh, you might call in, in unsustainably high. In order to maintain a level this high, uh, in terms of computer usage, Ethereum has to go from recruiting roughly 300,000 people a year to, um, let's see what it calculates to actually, because I'm kind of curious in that. I know it's a fairly large number. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So it has to go from uh, 300,000 a year, which it currently is about doing, to um, 700,000 a year to sustain this cost. And that's just the break even. Um, okay. Now, if you're a miner, what does this mean for you? Because this is a question that a lot of people ask me. Uh, well, if it is a, if you're a miner and Ethereum reduces the amount of money they're spending for uh, blockchain mining as a whole, which they would only do for a very short period of time, they're, the goal here is to maintain a cost between 50 and 100 million, essentially. Uh, 50, but between 50 and 100 million, no matter the price of Ethereum is the goal. Um, because the price of Ethereum does not uh, reflect the change in price of computers. The cost of computing has not gone up a thousand percent like Ethereum has. The cost of computing might have gone up 10 percent. Who knows? But uh, between 50 million and 100 million is quite, quite a lot. Um, and it's substantially more than Ethereum had ever spent in its history. It had never spent more than $50 million until April 2017. So just three months ago was the first time it ever spent more than uh, $50 million. And I am suggesting maintaining a future uh, permanent rate of roughly 50 to $100 million. It does not need to go more than $100 million monthly in terms of expense. Uh, to make, secure the uh, the the uh, Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so now what you're going to find, uh, like I mentioned before, if you reduce that, infl oh, sorry, talking about miners. Um, so with miners, if you hold five percent of your assets in Ethereum, you will be significantly more compensated by the growth of Ethereum than you will be from the loss of value in uh, the mining equipment temporarily. And I want to emphasize that very much because Ethereum will create a humongously stable and permanent request and need for mining equipment that will at least match, generally speaking, uh, the Bitcoin demand for mining equipment forever. Okay, so um, this is, so for miners, if you hold more than five percent of your assets in Ethereum you'll be more than compensated within a month to two months after the chain change um, and you'll make so much more money. I can't even emphasize how much more money you'll make, even though it will feel like uh, the Ethereum is, is reducing costs by 80%, which it does reduce the cost for investors by 80%, but it does not reduce the amount it pays you by 80%. And so I'm gonna explain that briefly. So when Ethereum makes a purchase for hash, which this is, when Ethereum makes a purchase for hash, it is making a purchase on the entire market. Uh, there's a marketplace for hash. Uh, these are mining computers. They, see, they look to see which ones are paying the highest amount. And then they go, to the, uh, they go to the coin that is paying the highest amount for hash. So Ethereum is going to reduce its, uh, its demand 
on the market from roughly, uh, I'm going to call it uh, 200 million, from uh, potentially 200 million a, a month to 100 million a month. So, um, and, and for one single month, it will reduce it to 50 million uh, for the month of August, I hope. So, um, what, does that, what does that do to the market as a whole? Well, the demand is going to be shared by all people on the market, Sia coin, Bitcoin, every single coin out there. And it is going to reduce the overall demand for mining computers uh, by roughly 100 million a month or whatever you might say. And then um, that reduction in the overall demand of 100 million will get shared with all mining computers. And then, for example, the Ethereum people might get 25% less than they were the month before. But so will Bitcoin people, so will SIA, so will all the coins, all the miners of all coins will get roughly 25% less. However, the price of Ethereum, <laughs> this is... I, I can't tell you how excited I am, but the price of Ethereum will skyrocket. It will, uh, what most people would for, refer to as skyrocket. Um, but uh, let's, let's just uh, let's talk about that briefly now. So what's going to happen if you reduce the inflation rate or the rate of social customer growth, this is a good way to think about it, the rate of social customer growth, from demanding that one in nine of your customers recruit a new investor each year to one in 45 of your customers recru recruiting a new investor each year is that you're going to find that you have a permanently sustained asset. Um, and likewise, I suggest uh, reducing this inflation rate roughly every three months, uh, basically cutting it in half every three months which will maintain the cost of 50 to 100 million in terms of uh, blockchain hash security, whatever they call it. And, uh, and if you reduce the inflation in three months and then you reduce in inflation again uh, three months after that, what you'll find is that you have maintained a 50 to 100 million dollar constant purchase of mining equipment from the blockchain same as Ethereum will do today when the price stabilizes um, without any change. However, you will find that the, the uh, price of Ethereum will go from, it will honestly, this is, this is what will happen, it will go from you know, $150, $200, whatever the case it may be right now, to really about 2000 maybe more, in the span of roughly uh, six months, nine months, something like that. And, and then regarding the social growth rate, um, within within a year, less than a year, Ethereum will go from requiring a social growth rate of one in nine users to one in 200. So uh, only millionaires will have to recruit one $5,000 investor into Ethereum every single year to maintain their current price level. And all other users who've uh, made contributions of 5,000, only one in 200 will need to find a new investor in each year in order to maintain the price level, which can frankly be sustained through uh, giving birth and growth in GDP. So, um, so at this point, you'll effectively have the first world currency, um, can't stress that enough, but you'll have the first world currency with less than 1% rate of inflation or price deflation, depending on how you look at it, but less than 1% the rate of inflation, um, which is, purchasing more hash security than any other blockchain on the market by no small margin. And uh, it will end up purchasing more than Bitcoin very, very quickly. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Metropolis will be amazing. And so what I'd uh, like to see is to have the rate of issuance of one Ethereum, and I'd like you to support this with me if you can, to have the issuance rate of, of Ethereum changed to one ETH per block, down from five, beginning August 1st, 2017. That's what I'd like to see. And then um, after that, I would like it changed to uh, one half an Ethereum per block beginning November 1st, 2017, and then changed again, you know, cut in half each time, to a quarter of an Ethereum per block beginning February 1st, 2018, 
and then changed again uh, July 1st to one eighth of an Ethereum per block and then just cut in half every six months after that. And if you do something like that, then you'll maintain a steady expense amount of roughly uh, 50 to 100 million while allowing the price to go from um, a maximum sustained level, which it's currently the maximum sustainable level is roughly $150. Um, and if Vitalik's proposal goes, goes through, the maximum sustainable level will be roughly $250. But uh, doing it in this systematic way that I proposed, the maximum sustainable level for the price of Ethereum will go up to something um, near $5,000 by July 1st, 2018. No joke. It will change the course of human Earth history. Um, it will establish a world currency with no inflation, less than gold. Uh, it will have some, but less than gold. And uh, more, um, less costly than any political system such as the US dollar or Euro dollar. It, it will have less inflation than anything on Earth. And it, we can make this happen August 1st, 2017, by changing the rate of issuance of ETH from 5 to 1 ETH per block to 2.2% rate of inflation while still maintaining the same blockchain security that we've had, that, that we always, while paying more for blockchain security than Ethereum ever did prior to March 2017. Okay, so some amazing things are about to happen in the world. Uh, some amazing things are about to happen in blockchain and politics. And uh, it's not going to be a, gl a global collapse. It's going to be a global unification. That's, what's, that, that's what we believe in, or what I believe will happen, is there will be a global unification of the people of Earth. Thank you.